Pull up a chair next to the biggest hearth of them all. The Hearthstone World Championship at BlizzCon! And now, introducing your host, Rachel Querico! Hi everyone, welcome back! It's the final day of BlizzCon here on the Hearthstone World Championship stage. I am your host, Seltzer, and we are bringing you the conclusion of all our thrilling Hearthstone action this weekend. If you're just joining us, we have three World Championship matches left today. The first semifinal, where Ostkaka will play against Tice. The second semifinal, where Hotform battles Puno for the last spot in the Grand Finals, and of course, our Grand Finals. We're warming up the tavern for a World Championship semifinal start time of 11 a.m. But until then, we're settling a little argument between Team Archon and Tempo Storm. In the best way we know how, actually. With Tavern Brawls. Here to bring you coverage of this historic grudge match are the guys on the desk, Nimsh, Frodan, and Robert. Take it away, guys. Thank you so much, Rachel. Temple Storm versus Team Archon. We're finally going to see who is the better team. Frodan, as the janitor ah, of Temple Storm, yeah. can you please explain? Uh, well, basically what happened was Amaz and Raynan were playing over the demo PCs for the new adventure that was announced yesterday, the League of Explorers, and they were just having a little fun playing a game against each other, but it started getting a little more intense, and of course, as it concluded, like most games Amaz plays, he top decked for the exact lethal, and Raynan didn't like it at all, so he challenged Amaz to a best of nine and the right to the trophy. Yeah, and obviously uh, with the Hearthstone World Championship going on, best of nine, a little bit unwieldy. Uh, we do have a championship, as I said, to run yeah. today, but you know, we can do something to maybe settle the argument, which is a time trial run of the new Tavern Brawl uh, featuring Gear Master Mechazon. Yeah, that's right. These guys are going to be playing through Tavern Brawl because as unrealistic as it was, and it didn't even stop at best of nine. It was like, well, we'll play a best of nine, best of 11, best of 17, best of 31. It's like, well, right now we only have 30 minutes. So we decided, you know, we're going to be playing a Tavern Brawl. Uh, whoever be finishing on an earlier time, which, as far as Reyna is concerned, will be the most important thing happening at BlizzCon for the entire year. An entire world championship going on, and Reyna bases the most important event based on him possibly winning. <laughs> uh, classic Reynoodle. That's right. how funny it would be if he can't even be, uh, beat the Tyrant Brawl boss. Well, I mean, uh, it would be incredibly ironic, um, considering that a lot, of the, a lot of the historical grudge has been because uh, these players rightfully think that they are better. So uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see who's going to get the edge here at Lake Eagle. Uh, <laughs> Robert, can you please, because this is a new Tavern Brawl, can you please explain who is Mechazod? Because we heard it so many times before, uh, just shout, those, those small gnomes were shouting it. Who is he? Uh, right, so button up for your lore lesson of the day. Uh, Gear Master Mechazod is a quest NPC in the Borean Tundra during the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. And uh, quite simply, he's a very nice robot, and all he wants to do is help other people be robots. So nice. Uh, because being humans, they're terrible. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right, then, Frodan, with the Sovereign Brawl, what do you... What do you think is the strategy? Like, how do you actually approach it if you want to win? Right, so uh, for anybody who has not been uh, able to dip into the Tavern Brawl, the way that it works this week is that you actually cooperate with another player to fight one single minion, and that is Mechazod. He has 95 HP and he has Taunt, and uh, every player is required to attack it. Uh, you can't really attack your opponent, who actually is your ally. And there's a lot of cards that does interact with your opponent. For example, Refreshment Vendor, a card that heals both players, is a card that often sees drawback because you don't want to heal your enemy, but in this case, you heal your ally. So those are really interesting cards with how they work in this Tavern Ball specifically. Yeah, it's so cool that you, you look at the game uh, in a different way. It's the cards like Arcane Golem giving mana to your opponent. Yeah, at the, at the exactly. very beginning, you feel like, hey, there is this, this mech, but I, I kind of want to win myself. But then you start thinking about how can I help the other player to That's actually right. uh, use the game to your advantage. There is one thing we will say, that the players are allowed to communicate to each other, so it's, it's not necessarily like any of them are getting unfair edges. We're allowing them to fully cooperate in the best way possible, whether they use game chat or they use uh, you know, real life audio, their own voices, they can kind of shout at each other, like, no, what are you doing? Like, buff my guy, don't buff yours, don't be so selfish. There's a lot of uh, ways that you can work together with your ally or by yourself independently and frustrate your teammate. Robert, do you think is that there is any possibility that one of the teammates will actually try to gimp the, the victory? Maybe Firebat will try uh, very hard to win everything and Amaz will be like, you know, I'm gonna give this one to Temple Storm. I just can't even begin to see a universe where uh, Amaz, in a chance to show Tempo Storm once and for all that Archon is better, would ever gimp his chances of winning. Uh, you know, Amaz has a reputation of being a guy who does anything to win, so I, I fully expect to see that. All right, guys. Uh, well, why wait any longer? Let's see what sort of time Team Archon can set, led by Amaz and Firebath.
All right, guys, the time is here. Amazon Firebats facing Mechazod. Yeah, they're already talking and communicating. Uh, they're trying to get their initial plan underway. Now, there's a lot of elements to this Tavern Brawl that we want to emphasize. The first, again, is that, uh, you know, there are cards in these decks that are pre-made. You don't get to build your deck specifically to try to fight against it. And between each player's turn, so as you can see, Firebat passed, uh, and then there's a card being played called Assassinate. This is being done by the enemy AI here with Mechazod. Yeah, Mechazod has an ability to double zap, dealing damage to both players. Uh, Robert, what do you think is the best scenario for the players um, to defeat the Mechazod? Uh, obviously, you have to play kind of what you draw into early, but I'm of the mind, and, and Dan, you might disagree with me here, but I'm of the mind that the Priest actually carries this matchup, and all the Paladin has to do is not mess it up. Uh, the Priest is really the one setting everything up, and then the Paladin can kind of buff these minions with Divine Shield and go to do a lot of damage, but I think the best scenario is the Priest gets out minions like Loot Hoarder, Cold Light Oracles, draws a bunch of cards, and helps the Paladin uh, set up to do a bunch of damage. Uh, well, it's interesting, like, Crip actually talks the matchup specifically like this way, and he's played a lot of the Tavern Brawls. Um, I'm of the belief that uh, neither player is truly the carry, that it, it just requires really good timing on cards like Lord Walker Cho. And there are cards like Millhouse Mana Storm as well, which normally is one of the worst cards you can play in a, in a Hearthstone game where the opponent on the other side has all spells. But in this case, Millhouse and Lord if you, Walker Cho, if you combine both those elements, will give you outrageous results. Also, if uh, Millhouse Milestone is being played, Paladin can get all those blessed, ch blessed champions and buffs on one turn, and maybe even one-shot Mechazod yeah. with the health being left. I want to take a moment to kind of address the strategy that Mechazod is choosing to go with, which is double zap like four yeah. or five times in the uh, onset of this match, though. So. so this is really good start for uh, Team Archon in many ways. The first is that Mechazod took a long time to get ramping early by gaining attack. And he has a few options. The first is that he can zap both players for the direct damage uh, with his attack. So he'd be doing six right now to both. Or he can do uh, three targets randomly. And that would end up uh, killing minions or doing face damage too. So those are his offensive um, his offensive options. And then he also has a defensive one in Assassinate where he kills the highest attack minion possible. You also have to be careful not to over overload the board because if there's seven minions and Mechas can cannot join the other side of the board, he's going to destroy everyone. Ooh, this is a uh, very aggressive Lord Walker Cho, and if the Zombie Chow does end up getting killed off, that's okay, because Fireback can also be able to uh, buff something else and give it right back. They're moving really quickly, though, because looks like the Mechazod is aggroing the opponent's face rather than controlling the state of the board. And remember, all these choices are, so to speak, randomly chosen even though it conveniently doesn't feel like that way. Yeah, it's so interesting to see that the uh, Mechazod is so aggro here, because normally when you play Loro Kercho, you think Loro Kercho is the best card you can get, just uh, trading the spells, giving spells to your friends to, to defeat him. But Mechazod has this special skill to kill Loro Kercho. Yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's even less a fan of pandas than he is of, uh, of people with blood. Yes. One thing to note, too, is that on this following turn, because you're like, well, Lord Walker Cho seems like a really powerful card, uh, it will be spent the entire turn killing Lord Walker Cho. Um, so Fireband and Moz are kind of trying to exploit this turn, saying we're going to buff these minions as strong as we can, because we know on the following turn, Mixod will spend an entire card s assassinating Lord Walker Cho specifically, because he hates pandas. And oh, there we go. Lord Walker, the Wolpentinger. Right. Really, really rude statement, too. Print is dead. Uh, Wow. The, yeah, the only thing is that uh, they're really hoping that uh, Mechazod won't just randomly do damage to three targets and kill uh, every single minion that they're trying to build up right now. But they should have enough time based off these series of moves, and they're going very quickly. Yeah, for now it seems that uh, Team Archon is doing really well, and they will have enough time to kill Mechazod. They're buffing the zombie Zombichow. Zombichow is also great because he can kill your opponent, who is your friend in this scenario. Yes. Um, as you can see, you know, in this in this case, even healing is really good to the face because of things like the Light Wardens and the Holy Champions. Those get buffed by almost everything. Yeah, they are positioning him themselves in a really good spot. Mm -hmm. They both have more than 20 health, and Mechazod can deal only 6 uh, with the Zap ability. Uh, if he overclocks, then he's not dealing damage that turn. That's true. He does take an entire turn to ramp um, damage, which is starting to become really dangerous for Mechazod because these light wells will grow so aggressively, and Amaz has two Blessed Champions, which can continue to double dip in damage. This is really an epic moment. This is the first ever live Hearthstone raid. 
Uh, kind of, yeah, in many ways. And it'll start becoming really big damage for Amaz in a second as soon as he uses Seal of Champions and Blessed Champion. That is 24 damage? Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, it's still a bit uh, far away, but uh, maybe with... Oh my goodness, that could be uh, the beginning of the end here of this, because uh, Megazod's not killing minions, and he's just actually buffing creatures on board. This is a really good start for Team Archon. These are some classic robot misplays here. He should be dealing with the board, and instead uh, he's just allowing these Light Wardens to grow super big, and they'll probably be his undoing. It might even just be the end of the, the run here for Team Archon, putting them at... Uh, I'm not sure. It feels like less than five minutes, which is bad for our programming because we slot this to be half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't help if the teams are so good that they can deal with the boss really fast. I mean, I, I feel like Mechazod's just playing poorly. It actually kind of feels like he's throwing. It, it feels like there's three people on Team Archon at the moment, uh, unless he manages to kill every minion on board right now. No, that's it. In fact, he just gives the win straight up, and Archon's just going to wipe through Mechazod very quickly. That's so interesting. We heard Amas had some relationship with Ragnaros before. Uh, before. Maybe he was talking to Mechazod as well. Anytime Priest is related, you have to think Skamaz. There's just some kind of weird thing going on, some kind of treaty or some deal going on before the match. Hey, you, you said it, not yeah. me, but I, I agree. It does look a little bit weird, because every time I play this Tavern Brawl, Mechazod usually plays a lot better, so... Well, uh, we, we've all been there, right? Where uh, Mechazod early powers up, and then you draw no draw cards, you have, like, all spells, but these guys worked flawlessly. The one thing that you have to admit is that their coordination was on point, and there wasn't any hesitation with their moves and decision-making. Absolutely. They practiced a lot before this, this show match. They really want to shine and prove that they are better than Temple Storm. Yeah, well, I mean, so far, I don't think I don't think Temple Storm will beat them at all. I think they played it wow. really well, and they had a really good decision-making. No faith, Broden. No faith from no, your own team. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, been a, it's been a very rough year so far for Temple Storm. Uh, they're still looking for their big tournament win. I don't expect it coming anytime soon. Well, they still have their chance, but Robert, what was, your, what was your favorite moment uh, in that run? I think my favorite moment was actually just how quickly the turns were taken. Like, obviously, we've been casting Hearthstone World Championship, and players take a lot of time to really make sure that they get, get the correct turns. But since this was a time trial, uh, I think the longest turn was maybe like 15 seconds. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, Rachel is already down on stage with our players, so let's talk to them. Thanks so much, guys. I'm here with Team Archon, and that was really impressive. You guys are super fast. How many times have you played this Tavern Brawl before, Amaz? Uh, I played it about 10 times, I guess, and Firebat played it one time behind this back backstage just now. So we were pretty much very prepared. I like that. I like that you guys took the time to prepare. That sounds like many, many hours. And uh, Firebat, in your one game, how did you come up with this strategy? I must assume that you are the one who pioneered the strategy that took place in there. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, we have Lore Walker Cho, so we were able to bounce some spells, so we just tried to do that and then try and set up so that our Healy dudes wouldn't get assassinated by having a stronger power minion on the field. So that's why we like buffed the zombie chow even though we couldn't attack with it to make sure that that would bait the uh, assassinate. And then just tried to set up the turn where we could burst him and uh, had some success with it. Solid, real solid fire bat. You guys had an amazing game there. It actually seemed like uh, Mechazod joined your team for a little while there. He was uh, not not really taking out your minions. So was that a, a prearranged deal? And do you think it's going to go the same way for your opponents? Well, I'd say uh, these past few days were pretty lucky. Uh, Mind Games is a good card. Uh, we found out yesterday. And um, yeah, Mechazod is on our side. He's going to actually crush Temple Storm. And um, you know, it didn't really how fast or slow we finished it, because if they fail the challenge, they don't even have a time. So there you go. Well, uh, be honest with me here, Firebat. No, oh, you can give a, you can give a Maz a round of applause. We got time. <laughs> so, uh, Firebat, I mean, you've been on the stage. You brought us the trophy because you were last year's Hearthstone World Championship champion, and uh, now you're up here and you just kicked ass in a tavern brawl. I have to ask, was this in any way comparable to your victory last year? No. <laughs> Solid. Amaz, this Tempo Storm attempt at setting a world record clear Megazod is the last thing before our semifinal. The Tice vs. Oskaka uh, that you will be casting is coming up next. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting game. Uh, both of these players are amazing, so yes. Solid. All right, it looks like Raynad and Eloise are in the booth to try and secure a win by setting a faster time than Team Tempo Storm. It's going to be tough, but Nimsh, Frodan, Robert, take it away. 
Welcome back to the desk. Uh, well, that was a pretty interesting interview, Froden. I think Maz might be on to something. Uh, one thing that people don't know is that Arenad has actually played several of these tavern brawls, despite how he might say he didn't practice or he wasn't prepared or his hair wasn't right in the mirror this morning. Uh, he might make all the excuses, but Arenad has played some of these tavern brawls and practiced, and he has never defeated Mechazod. He's lifetime 0-5 and five against it. Um, so I don't, even, I don't even know if he knows what winning is like in this tavern brawl. Well, he certainly has to learn how to win versus that, but he has Eloise to help him. <laughs> That's right, and apparently she's the one who's also never lucky, but she's always good. So this could be uh, the turning page for Reynad's tavern brawl career. Absolutely. Well, I've been playing with Eloise that, uh, that specific role before, and uh, we rocked it. We went 2-0 without any yep. problems. So really, it's kind of a question of uh, how big of an anchor will Reynad be to Eloise's <laughs> yeah. chance of beating Archon. Yeah, well, it, it might be that case. Uh, I mean, this this was Reynad's dream to compete on the stage at BlizzCon. Probably not in this type of manner and fashion, uh, but you got to take the small victories from time to time. So, Robert, uh, PvE versus PvP. Do you think Reynad has a chance here? Uh, no. All right, guys. We're ready to start the second Tavern Brawl, so let's go. Well, uh, I, I've seen some Raynad PvE scenarios in the past, um, whether it's survival or trying to complete things in a timely fashion, and it seems like it doesn't go well. Uh, but specifically, it also seems to be because he gets really unfortunate circumstances happen to him in the most humorous way possible. So that's, that's kind of how I hope this Tavern Brawl ends. Well, Raynad as with Priest. Uh, I hope he prepared for that one specifically. Let's uh, evaluate the hands pretty quick. Robert, do you see anything specific that you really like? Uh, I think having low curve here is good. Uh, Light of the Naru, I don't know that I would necessarily want in the opening hand, but Powered Shield is pretty reasonable, draw some cards. Yep. Garrison Commander is a 2-drop, which you can just play down as a vanilla 2-3. Obviously has a lot of upside later, but uh, I think his hand's just fine. The Zombie Tower is really solid. Yeah, well, you can see that um, Megazod actually chose a very similar line of plays. <laughs> <laughs> by by his own choice or by uh, you know no it's the programming in his head programming by randomness because randomness is fun the the idea is that uh, it's giving a very slow start to let these players both ramp up because early game if it's just powering up attack it's very tricky because then it has six damage eight damage and any menu comes out it might kill it and do damage to your own through the bomb salvo yeah absolutely whenever I, uh, he's not overclocking I feel it's, it's going good for the yeah. players early on at least. Um, as you get later into the game, you want him to overclock because then he's spending his entire turn powering up and then you can take advantage of it with minions on board. Yeah. Ooh, a great sure. draw. Yeah, Arcane Golem is going to provide Eloise with one more mana crystal and that's what you want to do. Yes, because it, it ramps your opponent and normally this is really bad if you're trying to, you know, play against an opponent that's trying to outcurve you, but in this case, you're helping your opponent hit into more powerful mana minions. Yeah, it's even though an opponent is a friend, you're raiding together. Together you're trying to stop this uh, pesky robot that's uh, trying right. to kill you. I really enjoy when you're playing this on ladder. I played it a fair few times now, and you're you're playing with someone just randomly online. You don't know them, so you know you're thanking them for doing stuff. You give them well played. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're actually saying well played, and it's in a totally good manner way. Even if, mm. even thank you, right? Like normally yeah. when you thank someone, it's because uh, he did something bad for him. Yeah. No, he holy lights your face. You're like, hey, thanks. What a guy. Actually, the first time I played Arcane Golem, and the guy said thanks, I was like, wait, this is so weird. <laughs> right. Right. It's like he's he's not being sarcastic. He's being genuine. Absolutely. Well, uh, Reynad seems to be curving out pretty decently from some of his draws. And one thing that's important to note is sequentially, um, a lot of p things do matter with what minions are being played first. That usually means the that minion gets targeted. There are a couple exceptions, though. But generally speaking, he will assassinate the minion that's played first. And that's why the Dancing Swords being killed was big, because it allows Reynad to dig into his deck and hit that Holy Champion. All right, so Robert, what do you think the play is for Eloise here? There is a couple of options, though. Ooh, I, I like Lord Walker Cho because she can immediately activate, obviously, Blessing of Might and pass it over to Raynat, but uh, I think it might be time for Funnel Cakes. Uh, just get that health back up. It's a 3-5 minion on the board, not bad. I don't know about Light Bane, though. Anything. Or Dark Bane, I believe it is, yeah. No, Light Bane. I had it right the first time. I do not know about Light Bane, uh, since you can't really get any immediate value off of it, and all you have is that Blessing of Might, but... Uh, I think, you know, she has a couple of reasonable options here. Yeah. That... I want to say, I, I think it's so cool in this Tavern Brawl, some of the cards you normally would never see on ladder. Dancing Swords, the Beast, a lot of cards that people, you know, obviously don't play suddenly have a lot of value because you are actually trying to help your opponent in this scenario as opposed to, you know, the usual thing where you're trying to crush them. Yeah, well, they're taking some time. I mean, this is the first rope turn we've seen in, in the Tavern Brawl, and it might end up costing them. Uh, 
ultimately the war because you have to keep in mind not only are you trying to kill Megas out, but you're under time pressure. Absolutely, that's the, the, those are the rules. So Team Arkham versus okay. Team Temple Storm. Whoever says the better time is gonna take it as the winner, as the better team. Okay, so they, they buffed up the 1-1 just so that's another additional target to keep Holy Champion relevant. And then they're gonna try to use Lord Walker Cho to spend a turn to pass buffs and also make sure this Holy Champion can get in some big wombo combo damage. Speaking of wombo combo damage, we see Leroy Jenkins in the hand of Reynad right now. That's yeah, the one where you're, you're actually gonna give your, your friend whelps. That's right, and those whelps can also attract damage to the bomb salvo. Yep. Um, so generally speaking, if your minions are one or two attack, you want to hold on to uh, those minions on the board and not trade. But there is a caveat to that. If you have too many minions on board, say you have seven minions, and Mechazot switches spots, he'll assassinate your entire board. So just be very yeah, careful about that. Me. Yeah, Salira is a tricky card in this situation. But Reynard, as you mentioned, is passing the buffs to Eloise, using the Lord Walker Cho as long as he's here. And if Mechazot destroys the Lord Walker Cho next turn, it means he's gonna spend a whole turn just um, right. for nothing. And buffing up this minion as best he can. And what's smart is that this Holy Champion gets to attack twice, hypothetically, because it will survive the first trade. And uh, one health is just as good as, you know, six in this case. Oh, wow, yeah, and with the Cho taken out, it looks like uh, there is a very real chance that that is actually going to attack twice, and that's a big deal. Obviously, they're, I, I have to think they're behind. Obviously, we don't have the timer right in front of us, but it definitely feels like they're a little bit behind Archon here, so if they can find a way to get a second attack off, that would definitely help them catch up. At, yeah. some, at some point, they will have to maybe even focus on just killing the Mechazod. You know, if they, if they lose versus Team Archon, that's one thing, but if they fail to kill the Mechazod, that would be terrible for them. Well, I mean, it looks like they will be able to kill Megazod based off the way things are going, unless he somehow bomb salvos all three of the big threats that are growing because of um, the, the health restoration. Another problem is that uh, these guys are just taking a really long time between turns. I feel like they've been moving at half speed of Archon in terms of decision making, and that, again, is going to cost them ultimately from winning this race if that continues. Well, I think, I think Reynard is just consistent. You know, he was competing in some 24-hour streams before, and he was taking the slowest decks possible, so... <laughs> uh, yes, I remember. I was there. I mean, uh, there's something to be said about strategy, obviously. Maybe Archon was just kind of not really thinking through their moves. They were just doing things, and it worked out. But, you know, if you can come up with a, a winning strategy really quickly and, and just end the game... Yeah, it seems like Firebat really had it planned, and uh, they're, try they're just trying to do their best. Um, yeah, I, I, I think um, another thing is that I'm not sure if we're counting by turns or, turn or by timer or, yeah. time, actual time. Uh, both of those could be an influential factor. Um, one of those things that you do also want to consider is that um, if these guys are trying to maximize their damage, they might end up going greedy. But a lot of times, if you have like 16 damage, you should cash that in, just in case it ends up dying to a bomb salvo or assassinate. Yeah, the yeah, fact absolutely. that uh, that did not, the 16 attack minion did not get assassinated is, is great, and it's super fortunate for them. And they, they should definitely, I think, cash in on those. We did get confirmation that it is the, the amount of turns. So this is why they're taking time. Uh, that was a confusion on our part. But um, if that's the case, then you really just have to plan these turns very meticulously. Oh, the biggest minion goes down with the Assassinate from Mechazod. Yeah, rip Light Warden, but uh, obviously they've done a lot of damage. Uh, Mechazod's below half health now, so... Uh, he's below half health, and you do have cards like Leroy and the Beast, which almost guarantee damage in a way against your opponent. So this is where Temple Storm starts counting down. But you can see that he had so many heals in the hand, or sorry, she, she had so many heals in the hand that Eloise was really hoping that the Light Warden survive um, and be able to get some more damage. Yeah. turns. Mechazod was able to kill it though, so he knows what's up, what's going on, and trying to do his best as well. It looks really, it looks really promising that they're at least going to be able to clear the Tavern Brawl, so Reynad's finally going to get his, uh, <laughs> his, his victory, first win. Uh, thanks to Eloise. Uh, She's absolutely carrying him. What a, what a friend, what a friend. Yeah, great teammate indeed. Um, Eloise looking like she wants to use Blessing of Might because she can get two hits with the Refreshment Vendor in. Again, he hasn't buffed himself up beyond 6 damage, and that might mean this Professional Vendor effectively does 12 damage, because even if Assassinate were to come out, it would kill the Stalag first, because it has more attack. Oh, Overclock was pretty good for both of these and Reyna. This is exactly what you mentioned, Frodo, and at the end game, you, you don't want Mechazod to kill your minions, so right now Eloise has a lot of power on board. So this is another position where you can consider going for a card like the Beast. Um, can't, you can't use Leroy, though. It's imperative they do not use Leroy here. Uh, Leroy is okay just because you switches to your side, 
It's oh, not. Okay, it doesn't so. switch to your opponent's side. So you just have to make sure your board is not too full when he switches to your side of the board. False alarm. But yeah. um, I, I've been in those cases before where you know I've had Leroy Welps just absolutely sabotage what I'm trying to do. Right. Yeah. That and one or, ones are generally obviously not the strongest minions you can usually have in this tavern brawl. Yeah. For now, it seems that Reynard and Elise are in a good position and they are gonna kill Mechazod. The big question is, will it be faster than mm -hmm. Team Archon? The, the nice thing about the Burley Rock, uh, the Burly Rock Draw Trog, say that five times fast, is that uh, it, it does gain a lot of power very subtly, the same way that it, like a Light Warden does. But the problem is that Eloise and Reynard already used a lot of their cheapest spells, so it doesn't seem like it's gonna get much stronger. And I think Reynad was hoping that by playing a lot of these smaller minions, that it would be likely to attract damage away from Stalag. And uh, if the bomb salvo went off, these would get killed instead of it. Reynad is so salty right now. It seems like Eloise has no spells, so she can't buff the Trog. Uh, well, mm. yeah, that, I mean, that's one of the things, too. These, these guys um, are playing with full information. You know, Archon is talking to each other, so is Temple Storm. Um, so it's one thing to consider what their overall strategy is when they go for a more board flood instead of like the beast for the highest damage possible. Yeah, it seems like combos are not available to them, and that's pretty sad uh, because there is a blessed champion. There's a lot of ways to uh, multiply the attack of the creatures on board, and uh, Elias is forced to just play play minions. Yeah, one thing to consider too is that there's not any card draw really being drawn right now, and they're just stalling with minions which eventually just need to all collide to the face. Holy Champion's a pretty good draw, but it might be the case where Reyna doesn't really necessarily need to play it. Like, the Beast might just be better for damage and making sure that Leroy can finish it. Or he's just Leroy's now. I mean, either one still kind of makes sense here if he feels like he can win on the next two turns or the next three turns. At this yeah. moment, he has 9.15 damage available with Leroy. Ooh. Right, but there's still no finish potential on LOE size outside of the minions on board. Uh, looks like Raynad's thinking about just uh, jamming that Leroy down. I like the Beast a little bit better uh, because the part of me that's been casting Hearthstone World Championship thinks that it's, you know, more efficient because you get to use the hero power and use all your mana. Sure. Uh, but Leroy would be fine here too, especially as you pointed out, with Mechazod on Eloise's side uh, of the board at the moment. There's no world where the Whelps can sabotage uh, her entire board, so uh, there, time's up, I mean, let's do this. There is a point to make that maybe Eloise draws into lethal damage. Uh, with Seal of Champions or with um, Blessed Champion. Those things are all really powerful to potentially just win the game right here. Yeah, if the five attack creature survives. Oh, Bomb Salvo actually uh -oh. hits the well. This is, uh, this is getting interesting all of a sudden. Reynad's on a nine health. If we see an overclock here. <laughs> oh, Blessed Champion! Guess what? <laughs> They're one damage off killing Mechazod. <laughs> well, it, wow, and Reynad actually has no minions on board, so... <laughs> <laughs> what what if this what if this goes into overclock and then suddenly a zap and then Reynad just loses right here? Uh, yeah, that is a possibility. Reynad, it would be one health oh off of dying. Goodness. He has the heals though, so he does. So long as he understands the heal, he should be fine. Right. So I mean, they they will cash in on this blessed champion, um, and I would anticipate they just drop like refreshment vendor since it, or even just farseer if you want to heal and um, right. set up another minion for the bomb salvo. Either doesn't really truly matter. The only way that it could be bad, though, is if it zaps twice and Reynad can't finish. This is, this is again, an argument for, like, the Beast versus Leroy, because they tried to go in for the all-in attack, and it didn't end up working this turn. All right, so this is the, the big moment. What is Mechazod going to do? Assassinate. So good. it looks like no matter what, Temple Storm will win. This uh, or will uh, defeat Mechazod, but do they win the time attack? Well, in this case, it's a turn attack. Right, it's tough to measure because Archon was playing so fast that I feel like they went through obviously more turns. Yes. So we'll have to get an official count here. We're, we're immediately biased to thinking that Archon probably wins this based off the sheer speed of how they finish. But remember, it's by turns and not by the actual time limit. Well, I'm still impressed. They actually killed the boss, so... It congrats. happened! The it first ha win! On the big stage for Reynad. The, the world first Reynad clear <laughs> of Gear Master Mechazod. Move over Blood Legion and Method. It's where were, where were you when Reynad beat his first tavern brawl? Uh, well, I'll be telling my grandchildren you know, stories about this years to come. Uh, it was a salty time, but not so much anymore. <laughs> I think that was um, yeah. just, we're making fun of them a bit, but that was a great run. I think uh, sometimes in a, in a tavern brawl, you will hit those minions only. And what you obviously want are the combos. You want the combos to, to deal like the Team Archon. But Temple Storm, even though I think they got a, a bit of the worst hand, they were still able to finish uh, the boss, and uh, they, they did very well.
Yeah, and uh, because we found out that they were going by turns, it's very clear that they were trying to plan um, a lot of important damage. Right. And that's what ultimately makes sense, because then if it becomes solely by time, like uh, in terms of a stopwatch, then it could be just whoever drew better. But, you know, planning out their turns as best you can, that's what really makes this co cooperative tavern brawl very fun. Yeah. Great. I just, I just loved it. The fact that you can talk to your friend and play together, and normally you just play against each other, but here you, you work together to, to defeat the boss, so that was, that was really impressive. All right, guys, Rachel is ready on stage with our players, so let's hear their thoughts. Thanks so much, guys. I'm down here with Tempo Storm, and uh, guys, I want to know, what was the communication like in the booth there? What were you guys talking about? A lot of complaining, the usual uh, saltiness. I tried to carry Renat. Mm. Sorry, guys, I tried my best. Now, <laughs> Eloise, you actually almost made it to the stage last year. You were qualified in China in fifth, and you were almost the player to come out here. Now you're here playing this tavern brawl. Is this how you imagined your Hearthstone World Championship stage debut? Um, similar, but it's not that. I have a thing about BlizzCon. Even though it's not I compete as a player here, but I still feel happy. I'm glad you're still enjoying yourself. Reina, did you enjoy yourself with the Tavern Brawl? Was it fun and interactive? It was. It was, uh, I mean, Gearmaster Mechazod created a strategy around playing Assassinate at just the right time, so we're one-off lethal, but that's okay. Uh, I had a good time, it was fun, and at the end of the day, who really cares if Archon or Tempest Storm wins? It's, it's all really the same thing, right? Oh, is it now? Well, do you think that you guys won? What's up? Do you think that you guys won the competition, turn-wise? Uh, well, we, we, we couldn't really see it from backstage because the monitor's, like, inverted, but I think we lost by, like, a turn, I'm guessing. All right, well, let's, uh, let's unveil. Let's figure it out. We have our winner of the Megazod Challenge. So, actually, uh, Amaz, Fireback, can you guys come down here on the stage, too? I'm very excited. The team that beat Mechazod with the fewest turns, a total of 17 turns to their competitors' 18, is Team Archon! So, Amaz, Firebat, do you guys have any words for Tempo Storm? Wait, well, yeah, I thought it was based on time, so we played really fast. For no reason, yeah. Yeah. I was, oh. Uh, I think, I think we got scammed. What would you know about that? <laughs> but yeah, um, it was good. It was a good challenge. Well, you guys won. Congratulations to you. Tempo Storm, any words? One off lethal. Never lucky. One off lethal. Well, guys, all you were playing for is bragging rights, so I have nothing to hand you, but good job, Archon. Now, there's nothing stopping us before the final three Hearthstone matches of BlizzCon. After a quick word from our sponsors, go ahead, pull up a chair, and join us for the conclusion of the 2015 Hearthstone World Championship. <laughs> 